Welcome to another tech video. We're going to be looking at an Asus laptop today. So this unit is a Core i5, comes with 8 gig of RAM. The Core i5 processor is a 10 35 G1, it's a quad core running at one gigahertz base clock, boosting up to 3.6 gigahertz. It comes with a six meg cache on board. Comes with a 256 gig SSD drive. And as you can see here, the power brick is a 45 watt power adapter. So this is what we get inside the box. Well done Asus for giving us a nice protective cloth to wrap the unit in. And this comes in slate gray, as you can see here. So the finish of the laptop, um, it's a sort of mattish shiny finish with uh, an Asus printed logo uh, in silver. Underneath, we've got our two speaker outlets, we've got our fan intake, and we've got our exhaust outlet on the side, but we've also got some uh, additional cooling holes on the back here. So under the hood, let's have a look. Again, we get a nice protective uh, soft cloth over the keyboard. We've got our sticker, our Sonic Master, a Nano Edge display, lightweight, extremely portable, and a super battery, apparently. So let's have a look at the screen itself. So we've got nice slim bezels around the side. We've got a slightly wider bezel at the top. And we've got our webcam here, and we'll have a look at the quality of that webcam a bit later once we get it started up. And then we've got our microphones there as well. There's no privacy filter on the camera, so if you want your privacy filter, you'll need to get one and attach on there. Okay, so looking at the sides of the unit, so on the sides, we've got our power um, input, we've got a USB type C, this is uh, a USB type C 5 gigabit signaling on there. We've got our HDMI 1.4, um, output so this gives you the ability to connect an external display and then we've got another USB 3.1 port so that's another 5 gigabit signaling port. Around the other side we've got a combined headset jack, we've got two USB 2 ports and we've got our Kensington lock and then we've got our LED light there and we've got our hard disk and um, so the LED light so the power LED um, and then you've also got the uh, hard disk LED there. That's all there is to it on the device itself. Uh, there is no RJ45 connector, so this is purely Wi-Fi, um, and this comes with Wi-Fi AC. Um, comes with Bluetooth 4.1, and um, there's obviously no hard disk. Uh, sorry, there's no... Um, DVD ROM on here and there's no um, I can't see a card slot for a memory card reader either which sometimes you get on these devices but there isn't one on here so um, you'd be limited on your connectivity options for SD card readers you'd need to get yourself an external adapter right so looking at how we get into the device so we've got a series of screws around the outside and one in the center um, so let's get the cover removed um, and tools to do this you're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver, um, a prizer tool, plastic preferably or nylon and then a couple of prizer um, tab lifts as well. So we're going to go around and release the screws. Okay so we've got different sizes already so make a note of where they go. Not too difficult to work out, but it looks like the smaller screws go along the front edge and the larger screws go everywhere else. Okay, so once you've got all the screws out, we then want to have a look at where we can get under the under the edge of the unit or the, the case. 
Okay, so it looks like the best place is on the corner. And what you want to do is just twist the unit and you'll feel it come away. Once we've got one corner open, we can get our prize at all and carefully unclip. Like that. Turn the unit round. And then again, with our prize at all, just go along the edge and release the clips. And then I can come back on this side. There we go. And just gently prise the cover off. And once it's off, you can just lift this out of the way. All right, so looking at the internals of the unit. So we've got our two cell battery. So this battery <clears throat> is a lithium ion. Uh, it's quite a small battery. So um, purported uh, runtime of this unit on battery is six hours. Um, what we've got here is our USB. Uh, sorry, this is our um, 2.5 inch um, SATA drive. Now, looking at the connections on the main board, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see here we've got an FP and then we've got um, to the left of that HDD. So this is our hard disk connector and you'll need a ribbon cable and connector kit um, to run from putting a two and a half inch drive in here, additional storage drive, um, and then the SATA cable, SATA ribbon cable will run around and connect under this, um, into this hard disk uh, connector here. Other upgrade options are, we've got a 256 Western Digital um, M.2 SSD drive. NVMe this is, so this is an NVMe um, SSD drive and you can replace this. So all you need to do is lift up the little sticky tab that's currently covering the screw that's holding it in, remove the screw, take this unit out and replace this with a higher capacity drive. Um, in terms of the memory, so this comes with eight gig and let's have a look, see if we can prize this up. If we can get underneath this sticker. So this is likely to be four gig. So if we undo the clips, let's have a look at that. Now this is a thermal pad, so you do want to add this onto any RAM that you put in. Okay, so this is a four gig um, sodium chip. 3200 megahertz speed and the that means that there is four gig on the main board itself so you're not going to be able to run this in dual channel mode but you are going to be able to add additional memory to it just by um, changing out this four gig uh, sodium chip for either an eight or a 16 gig maximum will be 20 gig on here so you won't be able to add a 32 gig it won't be supported but you'll be able to add a 16 gig um, sodium chip in there uh, in terms of the upgrades, that is pretty much it. So memory, additional storage with a two and a half inch um, SSD drive with a ribbon cable under here. And then of course, swapping out the um, M.2 NVMe drive over the back there. Right, so let's get this put back together and then we'll have a look at what else, um, what other options are available to us now. Uh, remember I said about the additional storage, uh, the additional breather holes here. So it looks like once this cover is on, these holes here are to allow um, some additional intake for the fan and also, um, well, that is bizarre. So it looks like, so this fan will suck in the air and will blow the air across the main board. So it will blow the air across here and that should come out through this side. Um, so with the additional holes, breather holes here, you've got some additional cooling for, for your M.2 drive. Um, but in terms of airflow, 
that is most unusual for a laptop. The fact that actually it's pulling the air in through here and then ejecting it out through the side right across the motherboard, uh, across the uh, CPU, and then allowing natural heat dissipation to throw the air out here. Normally what you have is a fan on the end of the heat pipes here that blows the air out. So this is uh, an unusual design, but then again, you probably don't need the additional cooling if it's only running at a one gig base clock um, and then boosting up to 3.6 when it needs to. In terms of getting the unit back together, it's just the exact reverse of what we did uh, previously with the screws making a note of where all the screws went obviously so the smaller screws go in the front the larger screws go um, at the rest of the screw holes and that's it once it's back together just make sure it's all clipped in properly and there we go So let's have a look inside um, at the installation options and what comes bundled with the system. Right, so before we connect to the internet, let's just have a look to see what comes bundled with the machine. We're going to go into our settings and then our apps. Okay, disappointing to see that we've got five languages of um, Microsoft Office 365. So we're going to remove all of those. We're going to remove um, McAfee Live Safe. In terms of other bundled software, this is pretty good. There's not uh, there's not much on here, so we're just going to get rid of Office and McAfee. Okay, so let's now go in and have a look at the specifications of this machine, and then we can talk about some of the other stuff that we've got with it. So um, keyboard is a non-backlit keyboard, um, which is a little bit disappointing, but then this is a fairly basic machine. Um, and then webcam, we're going to have a look at as well. So as you can see here, we've got our i5 1035G1 CPU running at 1 gigahertz, 1.19 gigahertz. This boosts up to 3.6 gigahertz. And then we've got our 8 gig of RAM. Um, let's go in and have a look at the device manager. And we can check out what, uh, what onboard graphics this is using. We're going to go in again to our device manager. Let's go down and have a look at the display adapters. Okay, so this is Intel UHD graphics on here. So it's shared memory graphics. The next thing that we always do, we go into our power settings. So we're gonna set this to, um, we normally set this to four hours and 30 minutes with the display for when you're plugged in. Okay, so there's quite a few updates to go in. So we're going to let those uh, install and then we're going to do an upgrade to 21H1 um, and then remove all of the various pieces of software that I mentioned. That's Microsoft Office and uh, McAfee. I'll say yes to that. Okay, so let's have a look if I crouch down here so it's not too uh, affected by it. So pretty poor quality webcam as you can see oh god in fact that's pretty awful let's go into our settings and have a look okay so it's 0.3 megapixel so this is just a vga it's not even uh, 720p so this is just a vga webcam um really quite disappointing to see that from um Asus. I would have thought they would have put a, a better webcam in there. And as you can see, video quality 480p um, at 4x3 and 30 frames a second. And flicker reduction, if we set that to 50 hertz, because of our LED panels, we get some flicker on 60 hertz. Let's go back and HDR on auto. Mm. Yeah, really could do with some improvement on that webcam, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so let's talk about the price. So this was £439 at Curry's. Um, and let's talk about the weight. So weight is 1.8 kilos. And it's, I mean, it is a nice slim, slim machine, but uh, what would make this stand out um, is certainly a much better webcam and a backlit keyboard as well. Um, if they can improve that and keep the, the cost down to what it is at the moment, then they would, I think, sell an awful lot more. So this was, as I said, £439 at Curry's, and we will see if we can find it um, 
in on Amazon and then leave a link in the description below. If we can't, then um, we'll just put a link up to it on Curry's. So the audio um, is a Sonic Master uh, by Ice Power. So um, in terms of uh, sound output, let's have a little listen to that. Okay, can't hear any audio at the moment. Let's change the speakers to onboard speakers. There are reports there are talks with the US about how this might work, but it sounds as if this is now uh, something that is a realistic possibility. But Ben Wallace. Okay, so sound quality is good. Um, no complaints from the audio on that video. Let's see if we can find uh, a bit of music. Okay, so that's all I'm going to play on that, but um, audio quality is not the best bass, but um, sounds perfectly reasonable, um, certainly be ideal for um, using the system. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.